Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me. As always, you can help the channel out by liking, subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications, and sharing the content. If you're feeling generous, a donation can be made at paypal.me slash Digest. I want to start off with the coronavirus update today by talking about the r not value. First and foremost, the r not value of a virus is the amount of people that an infected person infects on average. Now, according to the Alamo, which is a journal that has done a bunch of case studies, I'll put a link in the description below, they are estimating that the r not value of this virus is 4.7 to 6.6. That's without any containment or quarantine if the virus runs its natural course. Now, what that means is, best case scenario, the person that has this disease or this virus is going to infect 4.7 people throughout the course of the incubation period. At the very worst, they will infect six and a half people. What this means is, when they told us human to human transmission is not very likely, it was a complete slap in the face to our intelligence. Now, if we're looking at this cruise ship, which just reported another 40 cases, the total is up over 220 confirmed cases, which means 6% of the population on that cruise ship now has either the virus or the disease. And that right there, like I said, is going to be used as a case study to determine not only the lethality of this virus, but also the rate in which it spreads, which is why I think they have left these people on this ship and quarantined them there rather than bringing them to a medical facility and actually trying to separate the healthy from the people that have already contracted the virus. This thing is spreading through aerosol form, which means even if you're on this cruise ship, you're effectively not in quarantine because cruise ships circulate the air, which means even if you're locked in your cabin, chances are you're still gonna get this virus. What I wanna talk about is the reported numbers coming in from China and how they blew up two days ago with 15,000 reported cases. And that's because they've had the right amount of clinical cases where nurses and doctors are able to diagnose this thing without a test being done because they've seen so many cases they can recognize it. They also started using the x-rays from chest scans to confirm cases as well. What this means is China is starting to recognize or at least display to the rest of the world that this thing is far worse than they originally told us. But this also shoots in the foot all of the media the last two, three days that have been saying that this thing is slowing down. And I want to stress that this is only the reported cases. Because let's face it, if you know how China operates, you'll understand what I'm saying. The metro areas that have the population living in the cities, right, that are near all of these hospitals, those are the people that are being tested. Those are the people that are being confirmed and they've run out of test kits there. There's not enough doctors to deal with all of these people in these metropolitan areas. But what do you think's going on in the rural communities, okay? The rural communities, let's face it, on a good day when there wasn't a virus going on, you'd be lucky if they had supplies to help you out in these remote villages. If you got hurt, you went to a clinic, you'd be lucky if they had bandages. And that's from first-hand accounts of people that have lived in China and had to go see these clinics on a normal day. What do you think is going on in these small towns, in these rural communities where people are getting sick and dying? They're dying without ever being tested. Therefore, they're not being included in any of the totals as far as confirmed cases or confirmed deaths 
which means the totals are astronomically higher than what they are telling you. And this is directly pointed at all of the people that are telling me that I'm fear mongering by telling everybody that the amount of infections is way higher than what they're telling us. You are naive if you believe the World Health Organization or if you believe China. The World Health Organization is in China's back pocket right now. What they've been, they've been doing nothing but trying to save China's face. All the information that they've given us, three days later, it changes into what they told us wasn't true. You can't believe what they're telling you. The CDC has come out and said that best case scenario, they are predicting 65 million people dead by the end of this thing. I'm talking by the end of the entire pandemic based on models that they have ran. 65 million dead. Now, let's just scrapulate those numbers out. If there's only a 2.5 to 3% death rate according to these people, how many cases is that? The CDC has come out and said, be emotionally and economically prepared for this thing to come into your community and for people that you know to be affected by this and to succumb to it. This is coming straight from the CDC, not from me. I'm not fear mongering. What I am telling you is the CDC has resigned to the fact that there is no stopping this thing. Even with China's draconian quarantine measures, like I said, the R not value of this thing is from 4.7 to 6.6. .6. Even with all of China's draconian measures, they have only managed to drop the R not value of this thing down to 2.3 which means their containment and their quarantine is not working exactly like I've been saying from day one. I'm gonna stress this from this point forward because it very well may save somebody's life. You need to be prepared to deal with this because it will be coming to a community near you. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Stable grains. Enough food for everybody in your house to eat for a month, two months, without having to leave. And this isn't expensive to do. You can go buy bags of rice, big bags of rice for like $12 a piece. Buy big bags of beans for $12, $20 a piece. You need to get stuff to sanitize, to protect yourself, masks, gloves, hydrogen peroxide, iodized salt, etc., etc. One of the best things that you can do to preempt this is make sure that your immune system is functioning to the best of its ability. And according to studies, the key thing that you can do to make this happen to protect yourself is get enough sleep. There are proteins that are produced in the body that allow your antibodies inside of your bloodstream to work at a more effective level based on getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep. And in fact, it's actually detrimental to you to be staying awake because your body starts producing hormones that inhibit your antibodies from fighting a disease or a virus once you get it. If you've noticed, if you've ever been sick, when you first wake up in the morning, you feel great, right? You feel better than you did the entire day before. But as the day goes on, you slowly get weaker and weaker and weaker and you start feeling worse and worse and worse. That's because your body is becoming less efficient when it comes to your antibodies fighting a virus based on the hormones that you are producing while you are awake. Do yourself the favor of taking this dead ass serious because if you don't, you will pay the price for it. Mark my words, I don't want to be right, but I know I am. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Take care of your families, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.